evening, everybody. It's good to be with you once again. This is the FOMC interest rate hike, or at least the release thereof. We want to see what's happening in the markets. Tee, it's good to be with you, brother. It's good to be here. Good evening, everyone. As Ash said, welcome to the TD Markets FOMC statement. Absolutely. Live and as he said, we are talking about the FOMC, the U.S. interest rates, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So you maybe want to just take us a little bit back, uh, remind the guys why the FOMC release or why the interest rates are so important. All right, there we go. Let's kick started. So FOMC, right? FOMC stands for Federal Open Market Committee. Now, this is a committee within the Fed that consists of 12 officials, all right? So what they do is they have these meetings to discuss the monetary policy, all right? Take decisions uh, regarding the data they got and all of that, right? With regards to the FOMC. Now, their mandate, the U.S. Fed's mandate is one, maximum employment, and two, price stability. Now, the interest rates falls under price stability because it is linked to inflation. inflation right? yeah. So the target for inflation is 2% in the U.S. That's what the Fed is trying to target. Pretty right? low, eh? Like pretty low. Pretty low, pretty eh? Low. Compared to other yeah. countries. And right now, it's sitting at 3%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So it has dropped down from... 9.1 percent yeah, it, it was massive yeah where well, it's massive so it came down to three percent so uh they are closer to their target of two yes all right yes so now you might be asking yourself where does in interest rates go in here right so what they did is when interest rate when inflation was too high they started hiking interest rates mm -hmm. and then the the fed chair mentioned that hey look this is going to cause pain to business and households yes. but this is something that we need to do in order for us to curb and manage inflation bring it down to our two percent target so we've been seeing them aggressively hiking interest rates at the moment interest rates is sitting at 5.25 percent yes 5.25 yes. percent yes. yes. and you know they're, they're predicting that it's going to go up to five 5.5%. 5.5%. You want to touch on. Exactly. Which if they yeah. hide it by 25 basis points, yeah. which is the expectation. The expectation. Market. Yes. hundred yes. percent. So essentially, that is what FOMC is. That is what we're looking at. And this is one of the important events for investors, for traders. Absolutely. Because we're going to get a sense of, you know, um, you know, the monetary policy in the U.S., be it long term or short term. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, so that is what the FOMC is. And actually, if you can just touch on the projection yeah. of the FOMC, Absolutely. see what is happening, where it is right now. Absolutely. T, thank you very much for that. So guys, remember, the FOMC is important just to touch a little bit on what T mentioned there regarding that rate hike there. Remember, households need interest rates to be a little bit lower. They obviously need to also spend in the market. And so if those interest rates are higher, it does favor the investors, but not the households and the businesses. So they need to curb it for the economy to run. You have the investors that is a stream of revenue, but you have the consumers, the citizens, that's the second stream of revenue, and they all have the chance when these interest rates and these inflation rates are imbalancing. Mm -hmm. So just to give you a bit of information regarding where we actually at with the interest rate in the U.S., and also mentioning that, remember, it's the front runner. The U.S. is the front runner globally. So what they do, a lot of other developed countries like Japan, like England, the right, UK, they are following what the US is doing. So don't only pay attention to the interest rate when it comes to the US, but also follow what the Bank of England does and the Bank of Japan as well. All right. So just to quickly mention what's happening, we are currently, as you can see, we are sitting at that 5% over there, guys. And so if we hike that by the expectation which the market has projected and is seeing, it's 25 basis points, there is a quarter of a percent, and so we move up then to about 5.5%. Now, this is a short-term view of the interest rate hikes. There's a lot of uh, analysts, a lot of experts out there that said by the end of the year, they would have reached 5.6%, but it actually came closer or earlier in the year. So which means inflation has come down, just like Tim mentioned, came from 9%, we had 3%, the job market is looking better. And what analysts are saying is that the US is not going into a recession in their words, all right? So what's important for us to note, number one, is that they're hiking it by 25 basis points. They've come down from 9% to 3% with inflation. That's good for the country, all right? So once this hike is done, there's a projection at the end of 2024, all right, 
we could be looking at about 3%, as you can see over there, 3%. That is the forecast, that's the goal, that's the objective of the Fed, to get it to 3%. And if we've already reached, all right, where we are at 5.5%, they've got to start cutting it now, obviously, to then make up for that 3%, as the forecast suggests. So let's quickly take this and see how the interest rates has actually affected the dollar index. That's the Dixie, the DXY. Now, what's important about the DXY, you guys can see that's a very nice downward channel here, all right? Now, what you must not forget is that when price is pushing down, there's generally an outer trend, which you can see over here, and you can also see there's an inner trend that gets formed. And price tends to fluctuate between that specific area. Now, you can see from the top right over here, we have pushed down dramatically, guys, and we have went and we've touched that inner trend line over there. We've come down back again. But now what the dollar index has done because of all the economic data, we've actually pushed through that specific uh, inner trend and we've actually touched that specific outer trend over here. Thanks, T. All right. And we've actually rejected at that point over there. As you can see, we're coming back down and we are now stuck in what seems to be an accumulation phase over here. This is a very important point. Thanks, T. You know, that's why I love this guy because we are always uh, we, we always synchronized, yeah? So uh, T has just uh, drawn the supply and demand box right there. So if that dollar strengthens, which is generally the case, when interest rates goes up, currency markets or the currency tends to increase in value because it's bringing in revenue from investors called foreign direct investment. So if this dollar strengthens, we're looking at price pushing up from that supply and demand area, demand coming in for the value, pushing all the way up to this uh, 1.11, 1.12 area, touching that outer trend line once again. Vice versa would obviously be if the dollar weakens, all right, we're pushing down, look at my brother right there, all right, pushing us down to about 89 points. Now, guys, just to conclude on this specific chart here, it's uncertain at this moment in time, but what you must know is that when this index is at the 100-point mark, whenever price pushes below the 100-point mark, it, it, it suggested that the dollar is depreciating. When it's above the 100-point mark, it suggests that the dollar is appreciating. So let's watch it very carefully. Let's see how it actually filters into some of the forex pairs. I think we're going to go to Euro USD, right, team? All right, and there we go. So now we're going to take a look at Euro USD. As my brother mentioned, Ash, you went through the projection of the interest rates. You also went through uh, the DXY. Take a look at where the DXY is coming from and where it could possibly go. Looking at where we are sitting at right now, that range that's creating either a supply or a demand, we can get a possible push to the upside on the DXY or a possible push to the downside, depending on how the interest rates come up, right? Of course, so right now we are looking at uh, Euro USD. Now, on the daily time frame, we are seeing that Euro USD has been respecting this trend line, this ascending trend line, right? Also creating higher highs and higher lows. We saw a nice little correction right there, which is a pattern for some upside. So this indicated that there are a lot of bias in the market with that pattern created, right? Now, you will notice how the market started pushing to the upside with, um, with this much volatility, breaking these previous highs right it broke it broke this previous high there it also broke this previous high there right to create a new higher high so we're getting a sense that this is a trend continuation at the moment look at where your usd is trading on the 60 on the 50 percent of the fibonacci right so according to this fibonacci it's indicating that the market has retraced 50 percent of the initial impulse so that's a very critical level there right as ash mentioned on the DXY, there are two scenarios. We have the upside scenario and the downside scenario. Looking at Euro USD, should we get strength from the dollar? How are we going to view Euro USD, right? We're going to be looking at a push from where it is. It will probably break that 61.8 and shoot all the way down to the trend line, right? It can even go further lower to the trend line. So there is a possibility where we're getting a, a, a dollar strength. Dollar weakness, what are we looking at? Simple, this uptrend to continue. This uptrend to continue to the upside, rejecting that 61.8 that we see right there, rejecting that structure, that support 10 resistance or resistance support right there. And we're going to get a continuation to the upside. This is how EURUSD is looking, right? So as you move over to gold, now looking at how gold is setting up, nice little price action on gold that we see, all right? We are seeing how gold has been respecting these levels, right? We've got this level that it has respected and that level that it has respected. Also, we've been trading in a series of 
uh, higher highs and higher lows. This is your bigger trend to the upside, right? So what we're seeing right now is how the market rejected that zone there. That is your demand zone, and that's also the 61.8 of the FIB. And then we saw buyers coming into the market, creating higher highs and higher lows, which also broke above this resistance. Now, at the time, this price action indicated that the buyers are now getting stronger with the break of the resistance, right? Now, recently, we saw a loss of momentum to the upside, which caused the market to come and retest this, and then it started to push up. From a technical point of view, we can see this as, you know, we would be looking for trading opportunities at that retail from a technical point of view. But since now we have interest rates coming up, it will affect, obviously, the dollar pairs, but looking at gold, it will affect gold as well. So what could we get from this, right? So if gold or dollar, if the dollar weakens, right, we are possibly going to see gold pushing up, right? And it's probably going to break the zone there around 19 1993, 1992. It's going to possibly break the zone and then continue higher back into the supply zone, uh, those pre-COVID levels there where you got the rejection there. Possibly getting a double top, we, we, we have to see that, all right? Now, another scenario, what if then we've got a lot of strength on the dollar? What are we going to see? We are going to be using this zone here to confirm that, all right, or to further indicate that we're getting strength from the dollar. So a break below that zone there the strength is going to kick in and probably come back down here. And probably this, this, this will be your first target and this will be your second target, right? And also we'll see if it will push to the downside. So we've got two scenarios. Either we're going to push up and go back to the pre-COVID levels or we're going to push down back to this trend line, back to this level here and probably all the way to the downside, all right? So that is how the EURUSD is looking. That is how the DXY is looking. That is how uh, we saw the projection, right, of the interest rate in 2024. They are looking at uh, 5, is it 5%? Yes. Look, look, looking at, no, 3%. Uh, by the end of 2024, 3.2%. 3.2%. 3 so that is what we're looking at, right? So now, as we are waiting for the interest rates at uh -huh. 8 p.m. Uh -huh. tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Investors, traders will be looking at this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the most important event. Absolutely. We want to see the minds, you know, what went into, you know, the possible like, market expectation is 25 basis points. Yes. And you're to 40%, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And then 30 minutes after that is the press conference. Yeah, the press. Right. Yeah. Any thoughts around that? What are you expecting from that? You know, to be very, very honest, I think where I stand with the fundamentals, my brother, is that once the fundamentals has come, Mm. It, goes. it goes. And as you know, it takes about three to five minutes and then the market starts to, you know, really relax yeah. again. What I do see on the dollar index, there was a falling wedge there, which signifies mm -hmm. some bias coming in. So oh, that, God, yeah. so I'm waiting for that structure to yeah. be broken. If that structure is not broken, then obviously I know that the dollar is not going to strengthen now. Yeah. So I'm going to definitely have to wait it out. Yeah, and also that zone that is created. Yes. Right, that range. So if we can get a break above, above. we're breaking above the pattern and the zone. And the zone. And, and the resistance. Absolutely. And the resistance. Yes. If it breaks below, it will break below that zone. Exactly. You know, uh, you mentioned the word accumulation. Uh -huh. There's accumulation phase going on. Yes. Right. Yes. So interest rates will give us a direction. A di it's the volatility yeah. that volatility. we want. We want yeah. the breakup of that zone. Once Absolutely. that happens, then we can make a decision. Then we can make a decision. And listen, gentlemen, there we go. We will be watching uh, the announcement very carefully. We gave it the breakdown. Ashley went through the projection, went through DXY. I had a look at Euro University, I had a look at gold. So we're anticipating these movements. It's important to have two sides. Yeah. Oh, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's exactly. important to have two sides, but because you never fully know what you're gonna get. All right. And so we are then waiting. Uh will you be sipping on something while you're waiting? <laughs> uh, nothing strong. <laughs> nothing strong, you know. Nothing strong. Nothing strong. Yeah. Um, what I what I can also mention is maybe uh, the guys can also look at some of the other pairs as well. Of you know, course. looking to the GBP USD, maybe they want to trade the NZD USD. They, you can look at some of the other of major course. pairs. I know the USD JPY it also has a very nice reaction mm -hmm. when it comes to these interest rates yeah, and GBP yeah, yeah. figures. So the guys they can look at that even at the stock market. Stock market, you know, what to say even the indices. Yes, you know, we, we know that in, in SA we have a lot of Nasdaq traders, a lot of US thirty traders, absolute indices. So you can have a look at that as well. Very good TD markets. Very good TD markets. We've got a lot of industry traders. A lot of industry traders. Hey, look, um, the question I ask Ashley, I'm going to ask myself, 
will I be sipping on something? <laughs> well, just the weather is going to be strong or, or more no, mild? Or, uh, 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 it's going to be hot. <laughs> it's going to be hot. It's winter. It's going to be hot. Uh, look, if there's no shading, uh, good thing is we have a competition that we run. Here. They the yes, they will be go. running. All right. So if you're a member of TD Markets of an account with us, you stand yourself a chance to win an inverter. Yeah. Right. We know that in SA there's a problem with load shading. Imagine you take a trade and then load shading hits. Yes. After you forgot to well, not forgot, but you didn't put your stop losses yet. Yes, yet, yeah, yeah. Load shading hits. That's not a nice feeling. Absolutely. That's not a nice feeling. Right. So we don't want you running to the nearest uh you know restaurant and open your charts. Best believe, TD Markets, we have you sorted, right? So, open an account with us. Every deposit you make is a is one ticket, it's a single, single ticket into the draw. Into the into, draw, into the drop, into right? The draw, yeah. And then also make sure that you follow us on all social media platforms, tag uh -huh. at least three of your friends. Absolutely. And then, hey, T's and C's are on the website. Competition ends on the 1st of July. There we go. Can't wait to see who the winner is. Absolutely, man. T, yes. this has been fantastic, man. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Season three with T and myself. We're pretty excited to keep things coming. 100%. We'll catch you guys on uh, the next session. So yes. Let us watch the FOMC. And then uh, if you guys have any questions, email care at tdmarkets.com. Absolutely. And if you want to find out more about the Team Markets Academy, email care at tdmarkets.com. Well. From myself, Tepo and Ashley, we will check you guys on the next stream.